ETN Hoops doubleheader tips off in Ann Arbor where Michigan has gotten triple doubles in their last two games. Harris LaVert, Derek Walton, and the high-flying Wolverines take on Bryant next. Fans can rejoice, finals are over, and their Wolverines play on BTN, presented by April Air. It's the 9-3 Michigan Wolverines hosting the Bryant Bulldogs here at the Chrysler Center, getting ready for tip-off as we take a look at tonight's Buffalo Wild Wings starting lineups along with Stephen Bardo, Jeff Levering with you, and the sophomore for the Bulldogs, Hunter Ware, is the leading scorer for Bryant. And for you, Stephen, what are you looking for from the Wolverines tonight? I'd like to see Ricky Doyle and the other post players from Michigan alleviate some of the offensive pressure from the perimeter of Michigan. You know, Michigan has four guys shooting very well from the three-point line, but they need some production on the interior. I'd like to see Ricky Doyle and company step it up. Karis LeVert and Derek Walton, each with triple doubles in the last two ball games. How about that? It hadn't happened in 99 years in the program's history. They've had two in back-to-back -back games. Ready to tip it off, and Ricky Doyle wins it. And the Wolverines will be on offense first. And we'll see how John Beeline's Michigan squad comes out of the gates against Bryant. That's something they have been very successful with in the last two wins. Yeah, it looks like they're going to do a 2-3 zone, but they're trying to mark uh, Karis LeVert, trying to keep somebody attached to him at all times. Oh, my goodness. Nice move by LeVert inside. Look to Doyle. Great move by LeVert on the baseline early. Yeah, Karis LeVert is so long, Jeff, that when you're looking at him on film, he looks one way, but then when you get face to face, he is long and athletic. Matchup to watch tonight in the first three point attempt by Hunter Ware falls for the Bryant Bulldogs. But on the defensive side for Michigan, Zach Irvin locked up on the junior forward, Dan Garvin. That's certainly something that John Beeline wanted to have a point of emphasis on was stopping Garvin. Here comes Walton from three, and he answers. In a zone, you got to pick your poison. And if the ball gets into the side of the lane area, it's really tough to defend. Contact, no call. Harris Levert has the size advantage on where. Bryant starting two freshmen. Five to shoot. There's Ware again. Nearly got it to drop over the taller Levert. Where nearly came up with the steal. See, when the ball gets inside the lane area or near the lane, the defense has to collapse. Michigan does as good a job as anybody in the Big Ten looking opposite. Michigan with a 59 point win against Youngstown State their last time out. Duncan Robinson from three. Nothing new from the transfer. Well, Michigan's overloading the side, and so there's two wing defenders in the zone defense, but if they put three guys on the same side, they force you to make a decision. Duncan Robinson, one of the best three-point shooters in the country, knocks down his first of the night. Expect more of that from the sophomore. Garvin inside, tough look. That time it was on LaVert. And Dan Garvin, the junior, took his time there, and I want to see how LaVert just in terms of guarding him because he, if he lets him catch and plays behind, Garvin will have success. Feverish pace set by both of these teams shooting. There's Robinson, and he misses the first shot of the night for the Wolverines. Bryant more of a setup offense. Hunter Ware from three, and he knocked that one down. Hunter Ware averaging nearly 14 points a game. Had a huge contest against Providence 11 days ago. Well, he's a capable young man in terms of scoring the basketball. And head coach Tim O'Shea, it's one of the things he wanted to see is his team coming out early making shots. That alleviate some of the pressure from his defense. There's Irvin. A good look inside. You got, excuse me, Jeff, you got Michigan, one of the better passing teams in the Big Ten trying to play them zone, so they just cause so many different problems that they stretch you out. 
Petway, the freshman, finding the streaking Ware. Ware already with eight of Bryant's 10 points. Well, Ware was locked in and ready to go. I think he, you mentioned before, he's had big games against Duke and Providence, so when the lights are brightest, this young man tends to elevate his game. Bryant University, not on national television all that much. But he knows when to shine, that's for sure. And Irvin has been working on his outside stroke of late. It's a big turnaround that falls for him. Irvin really trying to overcome the lack of consistency when he had that back injury. Big steal, numbers going the other way. Levert hangs and hits. John Beeline told us before the game, Jeff, how Michigan's running like they were two years ago. So they're getting up and down, forcing turnovers, getting easy looks. Mostly man-to-man -man defense, too. Rainbow three off the back of the rim by Nezre Zuzwa. Levert running the offense again. Into the corner, the extra pass. Irvin from three, knocks down the first one. Huge confidence builder for Zach Irvin. Yeah, Zach Irvin really shooting the ball 17% from three-point land. It's just struggles. That's got to be a great sign. Ware with a miss. Michigan looking to run. Walton fires from the top of the key. Couldn't hit that one. Just the second miss of the game for the Wolverines early. And a travel. Feverish pace set by the Wolverines here tonight against Bryant. They've got a seven-point lead early. Michigan Wolverines with back-to-back -back games with triple doubles. First, it was Karis Levert against Northern Kentucky, and then Derek Walton did it in the last game against Youngstown State. Stephen Bardo, how hard is it to have a triple double? Very difficult. Uh, you know, that's touching all facets of the game, and those guys are still playing defense. So when you, you've got that, those type of numbers and that kind of production, that's very difficult to do. And then to have them back-to-back -back from different players, uh, you know, to expect Derek Walton to get 10 rebounds or 11 rebounds, rather, that's quite an accomplishment. That are Reese's perfect combination. The back-to-back -back triple doubles by the Wolverines. They have Levert, who's technically a big, to have 10 assists, too. Yeah. It's not easy. No, it's not easy. And, you know, if you're Michigan, they have a, they put a lot of pressure on their perimeter players to, to produce in a number of different areas. And those guys step up and they're very consistent at it. Duncan Robinson charged with his first fouls. He reached in. Michigan foul on Duncan Robinson. That's his first team first. Talk, talking to Laval Jordan, assistant from Michigan before the game. He says that Mo Wagner is going to be a player. Still learning some of the, the fundamentals and the nuances of what Michigan wants to do. but. So he's got some toughness to him. He's got a little bit of swagger about him. So they expect big things from Mo Wagner. First guy off the bench, too. With the talent and the depth that this Michigan team has. Karis LeVert trying to swipe it away. Eight to shoot. Teeing it up. That's one of the freshmen. That was Zuzwa who missed off the back of the iron. And we've been talking about the triple doubles, just how hard it is for teams to have multiple players to have a triple-double in the same season. It's only been done five times since the 96-97 season. So you know how rare that is. That, you know, it's, to see Utah Valley and Liberty in there is kind of good as well. To see some teams that are non-power conference get that type of accomplishment. But it's uh, quite, a, quite an award. I'd say an award for, for Michigan just to have those two guys be that productive. Derek Walton, who had missed the previous three games with an ankle injury coming back and producing like that, that's big time. Yeah, it is big time, and it's a great signal that he is fully healthy as well. Hunter Ware, what a good start for the sophomore. Raining threes for Bryant to keep them in this one. Well, Bryant played Providence pretty tough. I know Chris Dunn wasn't playing that day, Ben Bentle was overcoming a uh, sore ankle but actually played in that game so even though they lost they're, they're coming with a little bit more confidence than they were earlier in the season.
The Bryant team at one point had a 13 point lead on Providence. And it was touch and go until about four or five minutes left in that ball game. Bryant sticking with them. This is a coach in Tim O'Shea that does not shy away from playing high quality opponents. Well, and I think, you know, when you, you look at Tim O'Shea and his program at Bryant, having been in the Division One level that long, you know, you want to take, you want to go on the road before their conference season, play really tough competition, and then it's a, it's a trick, kind of, you know, to, they're losing games, but they'll have confidence going into, into the conference because they played up the level of competition. Karis LeVert knocks down his first three. When you open up a season against the defending national champs, that's not shying away from anybody, and Bryant's done it the last two years. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, take on the Duke Blue Devils and get down there, Cameron, boy, that's, that's a tall order. That is a tall order. Tim O'Shea, the head coach at Bryant in his eighth season, shepherded this program between a transition from Division II to Division I six years ago. They've had three straight winning seasons there. Petway, the freshman from North Providence, throwing it down. Excellent. Uh, it looked like it was going to be a handoff exchange. And Petway's like, no, I see an opening and, and knew what to do with it. Michigan going to have their hands full. Avert, a wild shot up and over the backboard. There was some contact there, but no call. John Beeline. The head man here in Ann Arbor in his ninth season. And he's just happy to have his team at about as full strength as they're going to be. Yeah, because they, they've really suffered last year a lot of uh, crucial injuries. Good steal up ahead. Irvin all by himself. That'll help the shooting confidence right there. Get a dunk down, get aggressive in the, in the passing lanes. Irvin already with nine points. This is a guy that John Beeline and company really wanted to get going here tonight. Good move inside with the offhand by Pedway. But for Irvin to get going ahead of their conference opener against Illinois, that's huge. Yeah, because he's going to be counted on. He could do so many things like we're just seeing right there. Didn't get it to drop. But he can slide in the post and he's got the size to get a shot off. Mark Donnell with a chance for a three-point play. It's all Wolverines early. Zach Irvin getting his hand in on the ball, getting a nice pass from his teammates and showing them, I still got hops. University 11 28 to play here in the first half in Ann Arbor. And welcome courtside here at the Chrysler Center alongside Stephen Bardo, Jeff Levering with you. And we talked at the top of the broadcast today about Michigan trying to get more post presence as the Big Ten schedule heats up against Illinois coming up next week. Yeah, I think that's one of the keys, Jeff, for them to be successful moving forward. Ricky Doyle, Donnell, you know, you see the numbers right there. I don't need them to get much higher than that, but they need to improve because you can't rely mainly on the three point shot all Big Ten season along and then Zach Irvin needs to find his stroke from three-point land was excellent from that range last season has really struggled to find his niche from distance four for five already tonight for Zach Irvin that was tonight's tire rack expert analysis so perfectly done by our own Stephen Bardo <laughs> oh, that's, that was my Christmas present right there the description of perfectly done. I, I wasn't uh, up to date with my shopping, so I appreciate that. I, I tried to, to tee up as best I could. Very tough. Very <laughs> tough. <laughs> Brian hanging tough. After Mark Donnell finished up a three point play, shot clock winding down. Tough look from Zuzwa. Strong rebound by Michigan going the other way. Well, Michigan doing. Pretty much anything they want on the offensive end. Nine assists to zero turnovers compared to Bryant. Two assists to three turnovers. So Michigan doing an excellent job like they normally do of taking care of the basketball. Michigan having an assist on all but one bucket so far as Ware ripped it away from Irvin. Ware trying to go the other way. Fouled and couldn't get it to fall. So Hunter Ware will go to the line. He has been a one-man wrecking crew for Bryant early. Oh, the quick hands comes up with the steal and drew the contact from Zach Irvin, but 
Waited on Irvin, but got to finish that. Where with 11 of the 17 Bulldogs points so far. BTN has you covered all week long as we get you up to speed on all things college sports. Join the conversation on BTN Live weeknights at 6 Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. Show them the talk of Michigan State coming up here pretty soon and college football playoffs. It's Alabama. Looking forward to that. Just a small game yeah, just, for Michigan State. Yeah, just a small game. More of like a scrimmage. <laughs> I don't know. Nick Saban may think something different than that. Aubrey Dawkins with his first shot of the night. Couldn't get it to drop. He had a big game against Youngstown State with 19. Ryan's done some good things on the offensive end here in the first half. Spread the floor. Shared the basketball pretty well. Zuzwa. Off the mark again. Michigan trying to push that tempo. Bryant just a 39% field goal percentage on the season as Robinson knocks down another three. Well, Duncan Robinson versus Northern Kentucky hits six of those threes from that same location. Tough look inside. Marcel Petway, who had a big game, rookie of the week in the NEC last week after averaging a double-double, had one of those against Providence. He is showing some very good signs inside for Bryant. Levert fires from three again. Nothing but the bottom. Boy, Michigan is... I really enjoy watching them play because when you think, okay, they can't be that hot, they can't hit that one, they do it every time. Six of ten from distance so far tonight. LeVert trying to rip it away, and he fouls where? Well, you, very difficult to, to defend that far off the three-point line. Duncan Robinson with good size, and then LeVert. The defense doesn't rotate quickly enough. And, that's what Michigan does, as well as any team in the Big Ten, is they make you pay when you're slow to rotate defensively. Lavert heading to the bench for the first time tonight. Well-deserved rest. This Michigan team shooting better than 40% from beyond the arc. It's not just one guy either. Nearly another turnover. And Ware got the loose ball. Ware with 15 points. Well, he is a lot quicker. Look, deceiving in terms of his quickness. And he's been Johnny on the spot with some loose balls, steals, offensive rebounds. Been key here in the first half. He's single-handedly keeping Bryan in this game. Tough look. And Mark Dinell hits the baby fade. Look at that. Dinell. Keith was very comfortable with that move. So he could develop that. That's a, that's a nice weapon. Donnell, the junior. Zuzwa driving, finally knocks one down. I'll tell you what, John Beeline and his staff cannot be pleased right now with the defense. Ryan has had a number of rim run, rim attacks via the bounce. And just like that, Levert and Irvin ready to check in again as Walton fouled on the three-point attempt. Andrew Skoka got him, and Walton... Gonna shoot three when we return. Michigan up by eight. Basketball on BTN is presented by April Air, the number one trusted brand of whole home air quality solutions for over 50 years. And brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. Ryan hanging tough with Michigan. Down by just eight. Good offense on both sides, but is that a product of poor defense on both sides, or are we just waiting for the defense to pick up for Michigan? I think Michigan's defense will eventually pick up. Uh, I think they're starting to figure out what Bryant's doing on the offensive end. But, you know, Hunter Ware and company, they, 
They're playing loose and confident right now in the first half. 10 of 16 so far from the field for Bryant. As Walton, who was fouled on a three-point attempt, knocks down the first of three foul shots. You know, to Jeff, you'll get Michigan fans, and they'll sit there and say, well, why is Bryant so close to Michigan right now? Well, those guys are on scholarship, too. I mean, they can play. You know, you get to the Division I level, I don't care what team you're on, you got guys can play. So, you know, Bryant hasn't been over 500 yet this year, but they, you mentioned earlier, they played Providence tough. Um, Hunter Ware dropped 24 points against Duke. I mean, these are capable players. Zuzwa missed the tough runner, and here come the Wolverines, led by Levert. Outside look, Robinson knocked it down. Duncan Robinson with nine. So when you arguably have the top guard coming full speed at you, then you've got the fourth best shooter in the nation for three-point land on the wing. you got to make a decision. And typically, you can't cover both of them. Good job by Levert drawing two defenders and then Duncan doing the rest. Make it nine straight games for Duncan Robinson with at least three three-pointers. The best in the nation in terms of three three-pointers in a ball game. Robinson got his man in the air. There's Levert. He'll take one and hit one as well. If Duncan Robinson can do that consistently, because he's going to get people flying at him, if he can up fake, bounce, and then kick to an open guy like Levert on the perimeter, and that's easy offense. Now the defense starting to pick up for Michigan. Five turnovers now, and the sharpshooters for the Wolverines. How about four players over 40%. So when you can spread the floor like this, Jeff, and what I talked about, they're, they're as good as any team in the country from the perimeter. They just need a little bit more production on the in, inside because in Big Ten play, all the teams, they understand what Michigan's trying to do. So Michigan has a little bit more success in the non-conference. When they get to conference, these Big Ten teams will try to take away some of that three-point prowess. Levert was wide open. Donnell fighting for the offensive rebound, and it was out of bounds. We saw the four sharpshooters for Michigan. That's without Zach Irvin. He's yeah. still yet to get going. And he will. He will. I mean, uh, history dictates that at some point, Zach Irvin will find his long-range shot. Zach Irvin, who had back surgery in the offseason, admittedly said he was still trying to get his legs underneath him beginning part of the season. And John Beeline talking about he's not going to be judged on how he shoots, but his defense, as Petway, has a chance for a three-point play on the mismatch down low. But to get Irvin that shot back, again, he's playing good defense. He's passing well. And tonight, he's already got nine points. So maybe he's starting to come out of it on the eve, essentially, of Big Ten play. I think so. And I, I also understand that these guys know that they're going to have a break after tonight. And it's going to be refreshing to get back home for Christmas around their family. And then they can come back in for the Big Ten grind. So Zach Irvin understands how important this game is for him, not only for his team, but for him personally, to feel good about himself before they get to Big Ten slate. I mean, Brian's doing some good things defensively, but if you give Michigan the same look every time, they're going to figure it out at some point. That's what they did against Youngstown State. Hung 105 on them. Second time this year, they put up 100. Three to shoot. Walton's got to go up with it from the corner. What a shot by Walton. And if you're Brian, that just takes the wind out of your sails. You play defense that long, you get a contested three, and nothing but cotton. Walton has eight, and a reach-in foul on Walton. Now Walton, he didn't rush it either. And he caught the ball, he knew the shot clock was running down, but he gathered himself and went up. Nice shot under duress. Yet another assist from Michigan in their blowout win against Youngstown State. Had 28 assists on 40 makes, and they're on an even better pace tonight. Yeah, and it, you know, teams that pass the ball extremely well have a lot more trust than teams that don't. So, talk about Zach Irvin, Walton, Lavert. They played a number of games with each other. Now that Duncan Robinson is, is 
you know, filling in beautifully. These guys are, they have a lot of trust. You can share the ball like that. You can you can play with almost anybody in the country. Well, you mentioned Duncan Robinson already nine points, but he's got five assists, a career high for him as a Wolverine. So boy, just a, a little while ago, Ryan had made six of their last eight made field goals, but Michigan with their three-point shooting prowess, it seems like a distant memory. Robinson couldn't get it, gets his own long rebound. New shot clock, a new possession for Michigan. Lavert. That's Abdurrahman. Everybody's hitting threes for the Wolverines. Yeah, they're just making it look easy. Overloading one side. Rockman with the pass fake. The defender reacts, and he's left wide open. This is quite the pace for Michigan in their shooting so far. 10 of 16 from three, shooting better than 68% from the field. And the defense starting to pick up. Tough look. McLaughlin was locked in on Abdul Rahman. Good job by Abdul Rahman of not fouling. Recognized the shot clock was running down, didn't bail out McLaughlin. Michigan is shooting so well. They're not fast breaking, and yet they have 50. Um, well, that one would drop, they'd have 50. But they, uh, you know, they're not, they don't have a ton of fast break points. They have some, but just their ability to shoot the three is just ga gaps opponents so quickly. Well, for Brian, it was their three point abilities early in the game that was keeping them in them. And now they have gone ice cold from the field. All Michigan here. They've got a big lead on Bryant. Got a little dicey for a trio of top 10 teams last night. Michigan State able to hold off Oakland in overtime. Virginia, Xavier also coming back to win. Nobody's safe, but Michigan's still number one. Yeah, no, well, you know, and the fact that Michigan State, first game without Denzel Valentine, needed two career games. One from Brent Forbes, 32 points. The other from Aaron Harris, 27 points. That's not going to happen every game. So Michigan State's going to have to figure out a way to maintain their competitiveness while Denzel Valentine recovers. Make sure you stay tuned for the State Farm Halftime Report coming up with Rick Pizzo and Sean Morris. Three minutes and 17 seconds away. Back in Chicago, Levert. What a pass to Doyle. Great job looking over the top of the zone defense. And we have a 6-7 Levert looking over the zone himself. Pretty easy play. Rick Pizzo and Sean Morris in studio together. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> They're not going to have a good time at all. <laughs> yeah, that's going to that's gonna be a uh, pre-Christmas uh, celebration in studio there. <laughs> Nezre Zuzwa, who has really been the only guy who's been cold for Bryant from the field. Able to hit his first triple of the game. The fourth for Bryant. I see, Bryant now is going 1-3-1, but Michigan uses 1-3-1 themselves, so they know how to attack. Duncan Robinson with another three. That's his fourth in the first half. And the ball movement is quicker than the, the defense can react, and these guys get an open look. They're usually money, especially here in the first half. Those nets are going to have to be replaced at halftime the way that they're being used and abused here in this opening session in Ann Arbor. And Petway walked with it before he got the shot up. Another turnover by Bryant. That's their sixth. Michigan swelling their lead to 21. I think Petway's going to be quite a player in the NEC. Look at Lavert hang. Tough look. Ware moving it. Zuzwa with an offensive foul. Michigan, they don't have a ton of shot blockers, but they sure know how to take a charge. Yeah, they close off the lane beautifully here. Look, Robinson gets in position, gives up his body, so 
He's known for his three-point shooting prowess, but he's willing to do whatever it takes. Robinson was coming off the bench early this season. And then John Beeline said, this guy shoots the rock too well. We got to get him as many looks as possible. And he's paid off dividends. Well, and he's got great size, too, from the wing position. Good ball fake by Abder Rockman. Trying to set up Doyle again. Five to shoot. Robinson looked inside. Doyle wasn't looking. He thought that Robinson was going to hike up another shot. And why not? <laughs> I mean, you know, he should have just ran down the court because every time uh, Dunk has gone up, it's been pretty much good. Robinson already with a Michigan career record for his assists is Petway with a good look inside. But that's one time for Duncan Robinson where he could have been selfish and taken the shot, but he was looking to help out his teammates. Uh, that's an uh, unselfish play, and I'll tell you what, Marcel Petway, 5 of 5 from the field, 10 points. He and Hunter Ware have been bright spots for Bryant here in the first half. Robinson, a rare miss. Offensive rebound by Irvin. After Rockman, now Levert trying to drive. Irvin from three. Knocks down another triple, his second of the first half, and a guy who's been struggling from distance, feeling it here tonight. Tim O'Shea wants to talk to his Bryant Bulldogs. Michigan up 22. Michigan up 55-33, and stay tuned for the State Farm Halftime Report coming up in 37 ticks of the clock with Rick Pizzo and Sean Morris. More holiday fun in store from Chicago. Zach Irvin, who had, according to reports, his best practice of the season yesterday, showing off why here tonight. He's in double digits already and hitting shots from the outside. Petway fouled on his way to the basket. What a big key to get Zach Irvin back, who was the team's MVP last year. To get him back confident at full strength only does wonders for John Beeline's team. Yeah, and, you know, he uh, struggled from the field, but he's been playing pretty hard on the defensive end. That's what got him going at the beginning of this game. He got in the passing lane, got a steal, got a dunk. And... A lot of times, young players in college basketball don't understand that your game starts on the defensive end, not on the offensive end. Too many players we see, Jeff, their game, if they don't hit their first couple shots, then they're not bringing the effort. Effort has never been a question for the workhorse, Zach Irvin. And to put a little bit of offensive hooch to his game, too. This is one dangerous Michigan team. Oh, no doubt. And, you know, with the Big Ten looking pretty much wide open outside of the top three, they'll have something to say about it before it's all said and done. Who is that fourth team in the Big Ten? Such storylines as the season rolls on as Levert hangs and hits. And the final shot of the half off the backboard and no good from McLaughlin. And the Michigan Wolverines with a big halftime lead. It's been Lavert, Irvin, and Robinson leading the Wolverines. After the break, State Farm Halftime Report with Rick Pizzo and Sean Moore. Stick around. Michigan up 22. Basketball on BTN is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports, and by Culligan. Better water, pure and simple. Michigan with a 22-point halftime lead. And fans here in Ann Arbor getting in the holiday spirit. Welcome back courtside here at the Chrysler Center alongside Stephen Bardo, Jeff Levering with you. And Stephen, we talked about the inside game needing to get going for Michigan. They only missed one shot from inside the arc. Yeah, they did a very good job of establishing Doyle first and then Donnell later on. We'll see them here early in the highlight package where Donnell, that's a sweet jump hook from about eight feet, and then this is a, a really nice pass from Karis LeVert. Doyle knew what to do with it. And then all of a sudden, the three-pointers just came raining. Duncan Robinson, his favorite spot on the floor. Derek Walton gets a, a nice pass. Karis LeVert, and then this is the big one. Zach Irvin got that first three to go down. You could tell by his reaction, a lot of relief there. 
Zach Irvin knocked down two of three in the sharpshooters for the Wolverines. 12 of 20 in the first half for a season high 57 points in the first half for Michigan. The only thing that John Beeline, and he talked to us about this before the game, Ryan is shooting almost 60% from the field. I know there's Michigan's, you know, comfortable lead, but he wants to see better defense. And out of the gate, Hunter Ware, who was hot for Bryant, misses his first shot. It's going to be a key for Bryant, try and get him going here in the second half. And for Michigan, keeping the intensity on the defensive side of the ball. That's right. Last two games, Northern Kentucky, Youngstown State. Michigan did a really good job of holding them under 40% field goal percentage shooting. The guy that we didn't see a lot of in the first half was Dan Garvin, number 22 for Bryant. He was only on the floor for a handful of minutes and was almost unheard from. And he's one of their top scorers. Michigan forced another turnover, but Garvin is a key for the Bulldogs. And Garvin is not matching up very well with uh, the wing players. Garvin's more of an interior guy, but he's having a go against Irving and Levert. And it's just not something that seems very comfortable for him. He hasn't gotten into the flow. He took one shot in that first half. Levert finding the open man. That's Robinson. This is his first three of the second half. Of the three-pointers that Michigan knocked down, not very many were contested. That was not an easy shot for Duncan Robinson. <laughs> John Elon asking Terry Weimer, like, wait a minute. You got it back. Just ask for help. That's yeah. all he was asking for. Yeah, they, it, it looked like McLaughlin, McLaughlin lost the ball on the way up, so good job by the officials conferring and getting it right. Ninth turnover of the game for Bryant. Only two for Michigan in the first half. Playing very good basketball, shooting at a high percentage, keeping track of the basketball. Lavert got off balance, but finds the wide open Irvin. Uh, looks like Nezre Zuzwa was kind of mesmerized by what Lavert was doing and lost Zach Irvin. Garvin will not get the continuation. But Levert, the athleticism just to hang and dish it. And good job by Zach Irving filling in behind him. That's a subtle move, but it's so good to get your teammates in your vision where you can pass the ball and have something positive happen. Irving with 14. Garvin couldn't get the little floater. Already you see Bryant trying to feed Garvin a little bit more on the offensive side here in the second half. Levert driving got fouled before the circus shot. And they'll get Shane McLaughlin on the personal. His first. So McLaughlin there. Trying to keep up with Levert. Tall, tall task right here. Levert hanging not only over McLaughlin, but over Garvin as well. Three-pointer, and that's Zuzwa. He was quiet in the first half, but knocks down a big shot there. True freshman from Massachusetts. Again, head coach Tim O'Shea of Bryant. The trick here is to get his guys to play well in spurts, get them to feel good about themselves in spite of the score. And a foul before Irvin lost it. That'll go to Marcel Petway. Petway had a big first half, too, doing most of his damage inside. And if you've seen any of the games for Michigan, their opponents have had some success down low in entering Big Ten play. Their next contest against Illinois, that's a, a spot we need to improve. But that right there, Ricky Doyle, with the feed from Levert. They can score it down there. It's defending it that they need to work on a little bit. Second time we've seen Levert isoed up top. You either give him the jump or you crowd him and make him penetrate. But when he penetrates, he's so dangerous. Suzwa. And a block right there. They'll get Doyle. And that play just a moment ago, Levert to Doyle, our State Farm assist of the game. Goes so hard, does Levert. 
He's either going to get to the hole, he's going to get fouled, or he's going to find an open teammate. Good job by Doyle filling in and Karis LeVert making it look easy. Talked about that inside game and the efficiency that Michigan had in the first half. Again, only missing one shot inside. Good looks like that from Doyle and LeVert. LeVert who had a triple-double two games ago. He's on his way. 15 points, six assists, and three boards. Yeah, when you look at Karis LeVert, the senior's done pretty much everything that you want to do in terms of playing. He's been a high scorer. He's been a high rebounder. He's assisted his teammates. He's taken on the toughest player from the opposing team. So he has a wealth of experience, and the game has really slowed down for him. Coming off of an injury plague season last year, Irvin hikes up another three off the mark. Zuzwa and the Bulldogs moving. Zuzwa lost it and regained it. Tough to do. Up ahead, Irvin Levert. Showtime! Well, these guys love getting out in transition after a turnover. Make it look easy. Hunter Ware lost it on the way up. Fans asking for a travel. Hunter Ware has been quiet with the steal in the transition. Yep. Well, you see Levert able to be the beneficiary this time as opposed to setting up his teammates. I think the only question for Levert on that breakaway was how much mustard was he going to put on that dunk? <laughs> I like what he did. A little a little side, a little side swipe coming through with the two-hand clean stuff. It was nice. It went through the hoop. Mm -hmm. It was efficient. Yeah, it was efficient. That's Karis LeVert. High percentage shot. That's right. Michigan pulling away here. They had a 22-point lead at the break. And it picked up right where they left off. Walton from the top of the key. Rimmed out. McLaughlin. Trying to move things forward. There's a three, and Ware is ice cold after being pretty much Bryant's only offense in the first half. He has missed everything here in the second half. He has not scored since the 8.38 mark in that first half. Yeah, they've done a good job of shading towards him whenever he gets the basketball. Three on three, Walton takes it to the rack, fouled and a chance for three. Derek Walton and the Wolverines. They've got a big lead, but how about LaVert? Well, Karis LaVert is always setting up his teammates. This time, the senior gets out front and puts on a little show at the rim. We'll have to wait and see, and then Northwestern, 11 and one, coming off a big time win, overtime win versus DePaul. Can they make it to the tournament for the first time? They're off to a really good start, that's for sure. I think in that top four team of the Big Ten, I think Michigan might have something to say in that. I agree. Now that they're healthy and uh, Zach Irvin seems to be rounding himself, uh, finding his range from long range, so Michigan will definitely be in the mix. And if they continue to shoot, 56% not only from the field but from three-point distance they're gonna be in a lot of games that's right and that three-point shooting prowess makes up for a lot of other things you know Bryant shot almost 60% in the first half they were still down 22 because of the 12 threes Mo Wagner the freshman called for the foul Marcel Petway he's gonna to go to the line you saw all the players talking to Mo Wagner. And when you're a freshman, you got a four upperclassmen talking to you. It's like, look, one of you, one at a time, you know? Our BTN's men's basketball doubleheader continues next as Greg Gard leads the Wisconsin Badgers against in-state rival Green Bay. Big Ten basketball presented by April Air for BTN and BTN to go. The guard... Pardon the pun, is changing in Wisconsin. Great guard taking over for Bo Ryan. 
his first game as a head coach. And let me tell you something. I did that game last year in Madison. And thank goodness for Wisconsin. Kiefer Sykes has left the building because he had the best uh, missed dunk I, I think I'd ever seen. He went up on Frank Kaminsky. Now, Kiefer Sykes is six feet tall. It was one of the more exciting plays in college basketball I saw all last season. And Green Bay is a talented team. This play inside by Petway. Blocking the shot from Walton, who's a bit out of control. Wisconsin has struggled with their in-state brethren, losing to Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and Marquette this year. Well, they've been beating up on them for so many years that when these teams get a chance to, to get some revenge, they're going to take it. Hunter Ware with his first points in the ball game since about the 8:30 mark in the first half. Bryant trying to climb back into this one. Wisconsin and Green Bay to follow us here in Ann Arbor. Michigan slowing things down a bit. Levert from three. Couldn't get it. Long rebound by Irvin. Boy, so Bryant now working on a little bit of a man-to-man -man defense. Seen a little bit more of this in the second half than we did in the first half. Michigan getting a chance to work on some different offensive actions against the man-to-man -man here. And Michigan was exploiting that zone and firing at will from distance. Now with seven to shoot, Duncan Robinson dishes to Walton, and he airballs it. Robinson kicked it back out, another possession. There's Wagner, got the rim, but wasn't good. Good recognition by the freshman, though. Typically, bigs in that situation aren't taught to look up at the shot clock. So good communication from his teammates on the bench. Especially from that distance, too. He was a long way from the cup. Yeah, he was. I, I just like saying his name, Wagner. <laughs> Moritz Wagner. <laughs> well, that was Boschko Coaster who missed on that one. First time we've seen the Bryant sophomore in the ball game. Another turnover by Michigan. Got his hand on it. Four on one. Give and go. There's Urban to finish it off. Nice job. Advancing the ball, both guys. Irvin recognizing that Walton's going to make the right decision more times than not with the basketball on a two on one. Gave it right back. 16 points for Irvin. Good dish by McLaughlin over to Petway. And Petway tying a career high with 15 points. That way had 15 in a game against Georgetown back on November 28th. And 15 against Michigan, the freshman from North Providence. Walton from three. Couldn't get it a little short. Wagner tried to tip it back. And Wagner, they're going to get a foul inside on Garvin. Wagner, the defense. Good hands. And Michigan knows what to do with the rest. We are in Ann Arbor. Stephen Bardo and Jeff Levering with you. Michigan leading Bryant 70 to 44. And you also see, courtesy of ETM Plus, Fairley Dickinson at Rutgers. And Fairley Dickinson giving Rutgers run for their money. You can always get all sorts of games on BTM Plus by using your smartphone or your tablet. Download the BTN to go app and you can get as much Big Ten sports action as you could ever dream of through that app. And it's great for us as we travel and are trying to keep up with different games that are going on. To, to have the ability to tune in like that is a is a plus. Big time. No pun intended. It is big time <laughs> in the Big Ten on BTN+. Plus. There you go. Jeff, you're good at this. Had a few days off, so I'm glad I haven't missed a beat as Aubrey Dawkins joins the three-point parade. Aubrey Dawkins hasn't missed a beat either. And he is one of the four Michigan perimeter players shooting over 40% from three-point land. It was their first tray of the second half. They were 12 of 20 in the first half. Tough runner by Garvin there. They're now 13 for 27 are the Michigan Wolverines from behind the arc against Bryant. 
He won a lot of games when he knocked down 13 triples. Yeah, he just covers up a lot of different things. We talked about Bryant shooting the ball so well in the first half, but it didn't matter. Foul on Hunter Ware. And some notable performances in the Big Ten last night. There were 101 Division I games. Forbes, Hammonds, Tate, just a few of the stars last night. Yeah, A.J. Hammond has really stepped up on the defensive end, and I knew that they would have a, a, a much better response against Vanderbilt after pretty much getting physically whipped by Butler. There's a three by Abderrachman. He knocks down another one. These guys are being guarded and they're shooting a three like that. You know, it's it's a beauty to watch. Third foul on Mo Wagner. Danell going to come off the bench and spell Wagner. Picked up his third. Still trying to get his footwork squared away. Big body. Still trying to learn how to use it the right way. And John Beeline's arguing on his behalf to the officials. He didn't like that call. Thought that Wagner was in great position defensively. He's still talking to the official. Always the teacher, John Beeline. Yes, he is. We saw him earlier in the game heading into a timeout. McLaughlin over to Coster. In and out. Good box out by Mark Donnell. Michigan was on a run, and there was just one little thing that Beeline didn't like, and he was sure to tell his team about it. Lavert. That's a pure stroke. And that's a pro move. Drive the, the def defender, lean back a little bit, use that frame to get the shot off. Where off the front of the rim, offensive rebound by Garvin, who's come alive here in the second half. Well, Garvin's springing around that rim. We didn't see that in the first half, but he's starting to loosen up here. Starting to get some opportunities around the bucket. Second team in the NEC last year. One of the leading rebounders in the conference. Dawkins with a good ball fake. And knocks down the jumper. Guy is so confident from the perimeter. He ran him off the three-point line like he's supposed to do defensively. He puts on the deck. Almost shoots a free throw. There's Ware again. Finally hits down a three. There's a little bit of frustration in his face. He feels like he should be having a better night, but he's got a game high 21. And yeah, he's he put on a show in the first half. I mean, it, they've adjusted to him. They put Levert and then Irvin switched on him. So going to get Garvin on a foul inside on Irvin. And tonight, after our hoops action, it's the Big Ten finale presented by Reese's. Our guys in the studio break down a busy day of basketball with highlights and analysis. The finale tonight at 11 Eastern on BTF. It's good to see, to see Zach Irvin be really aggressive in all facets of the game, but got a couple threes to drop for him. I know Michigan staff is elated about that. 16 points for Irvin tonight. And the big key, 7 of 10 from the field. Donnell inside after a good look from Levert again. Well, Levert's so good at that. I mean, you have to pay attention to him when he has the basketball because he's so dangerous, but his passing is really, really key. Timeout by Bryant. And Michigan in big control. They've got a 31-point lead and raining from beyond the arc. Basketball on BTN is presented by April Air, the number one trusted brand and whole home air quality solutions for over 50 years. And brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. Lots to be happy about at the Chrysler Center in Ann Arbor. Finals are over. Wolverines up big on Bryant at the moment. And it was raining earlier today outside, and that continued inside the building with the three-point shooting from Michigan so far tonight. Yeah, they were excellent spreading out the Bryant zone and getting excellent, high-quality looks. Hunter Ware knocks down a tough shot. And he has had a couple of good possessions in a row. He's scored the last five 
for Bryant, and he's got 23 on the night. Dawkins from three. Couldn't hit the uncontested shot. How about Donnell keeping it alive, though? Good job. Mark Donnell's had a, a solid evening. He scored one given the opportunity. He's got some big offensive rebounds for them. Start to put together some nice minutes in the interior. He's got seven and four tonight. Levert from three. Couldn't get that one. Again, Donnell tips it back. We've been wanting to see it from Michigan, that inside presence. It doesn't have to be just scoring either. It's defense and it's second chance opportunities. Where Jordan Morgan was so good is that he could defend any big by himself. It didn't require Michigan to rotate defensively. So if Donnell and Doyle can pick up that trade as well, well, this Michigan team could be a lot better than people think. Dawkins fires again and finally rolls one in. Boy, Dawkins is uh, quietly coming off the bench and providing tremendous lift for these Wolverines. Hunter, quick shot. Almost a force there. Donnell with another board. That's his fifth. Good ball movement by Michigan, trying to find that open shooter as Bryant sags back into that zone. Well, I've just been impressed with Michigan looking to push. You know, John Beeline was telling us before the game, he's really happy with the way they're running. Donnell inside, missed, offensive chance, and it got taken away by Garvin. Big has got to use the left hand on that side, try to use his right, and that's why he missed the shot. There's Garvin who missed the tough runner. Levert piling up the rebounds. Levert again two games ago, a triple-double. Derek Walton, a triple-double in the last Michigan game against Youngstown State. Trying to find Donnell, and Donnell missed the pass from Levert. Sam is here. He brought his elf and Mrs. Claus, too. Nothing better than the holidays here in Michigan. Mark Donnell has had a good day off the bench for Michigan. 7.6 boards. Look at the hustle inside. Yeah, he hasn't quit on a couple second chance opportunities and laying his body out, giving his team those extra possessions. That bodes well for his playing time moving forward as well. He and Doyle battling in that center position. John Beeline's been trying to find an answer for the five all year. Beginning of the season, it was, hey, we've got four bodies. We've got... 20 fouls to use, so who's going to be the most efficient? Now it's, all right, here's Doyle, here's Donnell. We'll get a little bit of Mo Wagner in there as well. And all three of them play pretty significant minutes, and they're just waiting for DJ Wilson, who could potentially yep. slide into that rotation as well. Yeah, thought we might get a chance to see DJ Wilson. Still may at this point. Cam Chapman into the game for the first time for Michigan. He is guarding Garvin down low. They go right to Garvin. And Ware, not afraid to shoot tonight. Abdur Rockman with a nice weak side rebound. Uh, I know the game's out of hand, but Ware's got to change up his approach. He's just setting up trying to shoot the three every time. He's got good quickness. He's a sneaky athlete. I see him put it on the deck and create something in the paint. Or create something for somebody else. Wagner battling with Petway and a travel on Wagner. The offense for Hunter Ware has been their own night. He's one away from a career high. Scored 24 in the opener at Duke. Not a, bland, not a bad spot to have a career night at Cameron Indoor. Definitely. And uh, he, scored eight, he scored in double figures eight times this season. So he's a capable guy and, and, and looks for his shot early and often. Ripped away by Dawkins on the air and pass. There's Chapman. Couldn't get it. Another offensive rebound. That time, Wagner. Chapman almost into our lap, able to save it. Out to Walton. Set up another offensive opportunity. Great hustle. He didn't get down and about missing that baseline jumper. Stayed with the play and got his team an extra possession. 
Execution. Wagner comes up, sets the back screen. Bryant doesn't respond. Dawkins showing you a little bit of that athleticism. And a nice follow by Garvin there, out leaping Chapman. At 6 6, Garvin with some hops. And a charge. to save by Cam Chapman coming into your living room. Gets his team another opportunity. Wagner with a sweet screen of Dawkins doing the rest of the rim. That's coming up at the top of the hour here on BTN. But first, back to Jeff and Steven in Ann Arbor. Thanks, Rick. The Badgers have had their way with their in-state rivals for the last couple of years, but not so much here in 2015. Now, Milwaukee and Marquette have had success this season against Wisconsin, and you can see the numbers there where Wisconsin not able to generate the offense that they've grown accustomed to in the last few years. Lost a good number of their players that are playing either in the NBA or overseas. Trying to get their sea legs underneath them and trying to learn on the fly with a tough schedule. And it doesn't get easier with Green Bay tonight. As Wisconsin will get into Big Ten play very rapidly. Andrew Dockich on the floor for the first time for the Wolverines. As is DJ Wilson. Chapman trying to go to the rack and threw it away. McLaughlin had a quiet day offensively, and he threw it away after Rockman with numbers going the other way, and he'll take it himself. The elevation from Andrew Rockman. Man, I thought that was going to be a layup. Boy, he, he went into fifth gear and put the hammer home. Boy, his teammates loved it, too. That bench still on their feet. He threw the hammer down right there. This guy, defensively, I wanted to see DJ Wilson. Good to see him on the floor. Able to move his feet there and force Petway into his first miss of the game from the field. Two big minutes for Michigan here from their bench guys. Yeah, and you like to see the guys that they work just as hard as the starters and guys get the most minutes. And for them to have success and step on the floor and feel good about themselves before the Christmas break is a bonus. Chapman over the back. And how about Abder Rockman coast to coast with no worries. And he just wasn't even concerned with who Bryant was going to come at the rim because he, he had his mind made up as soon as he got the ball. I'm, I'm putting this one down. Garvin to shoot the one and one. And Justin Brickman is going to check in for Bryant. Tim O'Shea trying to empty his bench as Garvin misses the front end of a one and one. A lot of ties with Tim O'Shea in this Michigan program. One of them with Dockich Sr. Dan Dockich, who was the coach at Bowling Green, as Wilson knocks down a three. And Michigan tying a school record with 16 three-pointers in this game. I mean, that's nothing really Brian can do about it either. I mean, Michigan a well-oiled machine in the half-court set. When you've got a big that can step out and shoot a three like that, tough to stop. Karis LeVert getting a... The rest of the night off, he is our Culligan pure and simple difference maker. Won't get a triple-double tonight, but did his part. Big game for the senior. And just efficient. You know, he's, he's so efficient. Doesn't take a lot of shots, but scores the basketball. Always looking for his teammates. And one of the better rebounders on this team. Hunt with a career high. Hunter Ware. He's got himself 26. 
And now Wagner. I think the roof would have popped off this place had he knocked down that three, but instead Chapman's going to go to the line. It's part of Wagner's game that a lot of people don't realize. He's got a little bit of outside game to him. Yeah, great size as well. So, you know, he looks like a doe right now, a young doe trying to figure things out. And the D-line's intricate system. But once he gets, once he gets comfortable, he's got the build and according to the assistant coaches, he's got the makeup, the toughness to be a really effective post player in the Big Ten. Don't forget, after us, Greg Gard leads the Wisconsin Badgers against Green Bay. The Phoenix trying to upstate their Wisconsinites in Wisconsin. The Badgers in Madison tonight. Wisconsin needs to get a, a win heading into Big Ten Conference play. They've had a tough schedule in... Those young kids for the Badgers learning on the fly. Yeah, they, they're having to. Vito Brown stepping into a more prominent role, as is Bronson Koenig. It's a lot harder when you're a marked man as opposed to being a third or fourth fiddle. Chapman charged. As we take a look at who Michigan will face in their early action of the Big Ten, they go to Illinois first, and then Penn State, finishing it out with... Iowa and Iowa City, both the Penn State and Iowa games on BTN. But you look at Purdue and Maryland, those are tough games. Yeah, and, and you know, in, in the Big Ten, I mean, the, the perception, eh, maybe it's not as strong as last year, but I don't care where you go in the conference, on the road, it is tough. You go to Rutgers, ask Wisconsin last year, it's tough. Rickman getting his first points of this season. And if you're Michigan, you might not have eclipsed 100 points tonight, but you got to take many, many positives from this ball game. Well, they just shot the ball so well. They were so efficient on the offensive end. And you like to see the team close out strong before they know they have a break. Sometimes teams, you know, they slack off a little bit. But these guys knew exactly what they needed to do. How about Chapman with time winding down and establishing a new school record with 17 threes in this game against Bryant. Coincidentally, they hit 16 back in 2010 in their only other meeting against the Bryant Bulldogs. What a way to finish this one off. A big win for Michigan. 36-point victory over Bryant. Anything that Michigan wanted, they got tonight offensively. They struggled defensively in the first half, but their shooting made up for any weakness on the defensive end. Huge night, nearly 60% from the field today for the Wolverines in their victory against Bryant. We'll be back and wrap things up from Ann Arbor right after these words. Michigan blows out Bryant tonight, 96 to 60. And the head coach of the Wolverines, John Beeline, standing by with Stephen Bardo. Thank you, Jeff. Pleased to be joined by Coach Beeline. We talked before the game about defense. Bryant shot really well in the first half, but you guys made adjustments in the second half. Yeah, well, really, in the end of the first half, as I thought we really, they, they were on the pace to score 100 points. And all of a sudden there, they got 20-something at halftime. So we really made good adjustments that our, our guys just played a little bit harder, played a little smarter. They were doing some really cute things. Uh, number one, he kept hitting shots from all over the place as well. But, uh, you know, our, our, we did a better job. We're learning, uh, connecting better defensively. We just didn't at the beginning of the half. I know Zach Irvin had been struggling a little bit with his outside shot. What do you think about him tonight? Oh, I just love it. I just love it. I, I'm like his biggest advocate. And I just I love the way he goes about his business and practicing. He, he does so many things. That will all come, and it will get better and better as he comes along. But mentally, you know, Steve, you need a couple to go in. You That's need right. a few putts to go in sometimes. You need a couple threes to go in to get your swag back. I think you got that today. In non-conference, how would you grade your team heading into the Big Ten slate? I think we actually got better. And I know that the challenges changed after we went through a tough, you know, five BCS games, like in six games, and we were three and two. Uh, 
uh, we could have done better uh, at the same time. We were really, you know, we got better and better at some things, and I like what, like, Mohammed is doing off the bench right now. What Mo and Mark Donnell are doing off the bench. They were very uncertain early in the year. The non-conference sort of firmed up a rotation for us. All right, Coach, well, congratulations on the victory. Much needed Thank break. Enjoy you. yourself. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Thank Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. School record 17 threes tonight for the Wolverines. That's it from Ann Arbor. Our final score, Michigan 96, Bryant 60. Coming up, it's more hoops as Wisconsin takes on in-state rival Green Bay. We'll send it to the studio in the meantime. For Stephen Bardo and our entire crew, I'm Jeff Levering. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Big Ten Network.